Hello, everybody. Welcome to our live episode of Backstage Pass. Backstage we are here pass. in SoCal. Um, not on the road this week. Excited to be home. We've got, I've got what I had two weeks, almost two weeks at home before I take off again on another trip. Yep. And uh, Bray's going to meet me at some point on the road. And uh, we'll be bringing you a backstage pass from somewhere in the nation. Um, look forward to that. But now we're here and we're monkeying with the light. <laughs> yeah, too much light. <laughs> too Trust much. me, I'm a Jedi Can master. Can there really be, ever be too much light? <laughs> I would like to know. So um, I'm just bringing up my Facebook so I can see who's here. Uh, as you guys log in, just uh, say where you're from, city, state, uh, where you're watching from. Great. We love the interaction. We love, we're just very thankful for all of you guys following us and being a part of this, uh, this crazy adventure we're on called Life with Jesus. <laughs> called life, life with Jesus. <laughs> it's a crazy adventure. and uh, It is. It's exciting. It's scary. It's fun. It's what's your favorite part? Um, oh, well, him bringing you to me. Oh, man. <laughs> He's milking it, folks. I don't know. I don't know. This is a great That's worth lighting. a dance. This is, I'm looking at that. That's worth lighting. Um, and worth a dance. Okay. I feel like it's weird lighting. It's fine. You? Move on. Okay. Um, Anyway, it feels kind of dark and I don't know why, but well, it is what it is. So um, how are you guys doing? How is everybody out in uh, the web world? <laughs> the web world. I, I, you know, is that what we're know, calling let you? Let us know where you're. <laughs> we're calling you web world people? Web world. <laughs> they're people, Jill. The world wide <laughs> web. I know. I know they're people on the world wide web. Julie loves you're your from. glasses. Let's talk about your glasses. Okay. Let's talk about Jill's glasses. They're very unique, like her. Um, they're yeah. actually, Julie, they're pink. It looks, I don't know if you could tell here, they're kind of whitish, but they're a light kind of pink. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much because um, they're fairly new and I really like them too. You do look like a movie star. <laughs> That's what she says. I, oh, you said that? I, oh, wow. I'm just My repeating goodness. what Julie's saying well, about you. Julie. you. I love Julie. <laughs> She's nice to me. <laughs> well, guys, as you guys are tuning in, we're just bantering back and forth, giving time to uh, for people to log in. They're, they're finding us on the our Facebook group page. Uh, welcome to Backstage Pass. We come to you guys live every week on Wednesday nights at 6.55 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, all of these are recorded. We have our YouTube channel, Kingdom Creativity International. So please subscribe to that. And you can view all of the past backstage passes. We had 35 episodes for season one of last year. And now this is episode 26. What is in your resume? Uh, and Jill's going to be bringing uh, that word tonight for us and encouragement. Backstage pass is rooted on Hebrews 6, where God is inviting us behind the veil to stay anchored right. behind the veil with him. And that's where we get the the cool little slogan backstage pass so behind the veil is backstage god's yeah. inviting us uh to be with him that he considers us all to be his very important people vips so come backstage with us let's hang out with papa god let's talk about um real things um and uh, real life situations whatever the topic is god wants to talk to you even deeper than what we're exploring on the topic of that evening. Um, there's a depth to God and his relationship with you. Um, and that is responsibility on each one of us as believers to initiate and go deeper with Papa God. We can't allow Bray and Jill uh, to be your relationship conduit for God. No, uh, we can't let good. the pastors or the spiritual leaders in our lives be the conduit for our relationship with God. We're circumventing something, going deeper with him. All we're here is to facilitate pastor uh, this meetup with Papa God and where two or more gathered, Jesus is in our midst. So yeah. welcome Jesus to the show. Yay, Jesus. <laughs> Yay, Jesus. And so Lord, we just ask you to bless this message tonight. Bless Jill. 
uh, and bless us as we hear from you, um, as we interact with you, God, um, and we just ask for your leading, and uh, we just thank you for your amazing love for each one of us, that you do not condemn us, nor shame us, uh, that you're not angry with us, that you are a happy God, and you're full of love and life. And uh, so we're just thankful for you, God. And thank you for creating this backstage that you've invited us into. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said, amen. 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 So Jill, what's in your resume? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing and everything. Ooh, um, yeah, answer. that's that's the, that's the thing. You know, I don't know why this subject popped into my head yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, Bray, I know exactly what we need to talk about. I'm not even sure why or how it came about. It's Holy Spirit, because um, yep. actually, even since yesterday, we've had a, this topic has come up in conversation with a couple of people oh, who what did a not know what a that we were going to talk about this very subject today. Such a yeah, I know, right? Such a quinky dink. <laughs> so um, what qualifies us? to do the work that God is calling us to do. What does our resume look like? What qualifies us? And that is, that is my answer. Yeah. Um, what are we qualified to do? Nothing and everything. Yep. So let's, let's start with the Bible. You know, it's a good place. To all start. of us. I mean, all of us, I'm sure you're like me have looked at your resume and thought, Eeks, like how how am I going to apply for this or for that or for the you know a, a job job um, or for the things that God wants me to do because I don't have the qualifications and when you look at the Bible over and over and over again we see that they didn't either you know you look at Moses mm -mm, didn't feel qualified you look at David, mm -mm, didn't feel qualified. Look yep. at Jeremiah. I'm too young. I can't do that. <laughs> You're wine and baby. <laughs> look, look at Esther. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, I, I, I got to talk to the king. Um, <laughs> I got to talk to the king. <laughs> I, mean, I love Jill's interpretation <laughs> of the Bible. <laughs> you look at, um, you look at Gideon. I love Gideon because here he is, you know, the whole Midianites are just wreaking havoc, stealing all the food, you know, Israel's going, ah, my gosh, you know, um, we're dying over here. Oy vey, you know, God, what are you going to do? Ah, oy vey. And, then, <laughs> and then, and then the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and Gideon says like, oh, like, you know, he's complaining. Why is this <laughs> happening? God, why is this happening? Such why don't you send someone? Why don't you do something, God? And here's what the, what the Lord says to him. The Lord, Lord turned to him and said, <laughs> um, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. I'm sending you. He says, I'm sending you. Yep. And, and, and Gideon's like, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I mean, I mean, we're the weakest, the weakest <laughs> clan in Manasseh, and I am the least <laughs> in my father's house. I mean, my whole family is just little itty bitty, and I'm that much smaller than they are. Yeah. And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you. And you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, and I didn't read this part before, but I think it's so, so powerful. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Yes. O mighty man of valor, of courage. He, and yet he did not respond as a mighty man of valor. He responded like, what are you going to do? You need to send someone, you know, how yep. are we going to do this? God help us. Um, you know, and, and, and the Lord saw him as a mighty man of valor. And that's super important. Yep. So to see yourself, because this is your resume, this is what's in your resume. This is your qualifications is to see yourself as God sees you. And here in this case of, of Gideon. So this point right here, uh, angels are messengers. So the messengers for who? The messengers for God. So 
when an angel, angel says, my Lord. angel of the Lord, mighty man of valor, that isn't just the angel making this stuff up. That was a message directly from God to send, send, send through that angel right. to him. I want you to tell that mighty man of valor that he's a mighty man of valor. Yeah, because he doesn't recognize. Not recognizing. Got to recognize people. How easy is it not to recognize? We do it all the time. We do it all the time. You're probably doing it right now. We do it all the time. Yep. And yet, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. to do good works. Good works. To do the works that God created you to do. <laughs> and he prepared it in advance. So he's given mm. you all the qualifications you need. Before the foundations, he put it in you. And now he's saying, wake up, wake up. It's all in you. All those qualifications that you think you don't have, you actually do have. And now we'll look at it like from both the natural and the spiritual standpoint. It reminds me of a song. What? Wake up, little Susie. Wake up. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. I just... Oh, Susie, boy. if you're listening. Wake up. Let's wake do up, it. Come on. Susie. Wake you up. You are qualified. Susie. Okay. So we're waking up. We are waking up to the truth of who God says we are. And here's the thing. I think Craig serious. used to say that. If uh, Pastor Craig um, Muster, he said, if, if, if God sees you as this and you see yourself as this, one of you is wrong. And it's not God. Yes. So I love that. I love that. It's not God. So here, like, let's, let's talk about yeah. what God says about you. Yeah. You are a new creation. You're a new creation created in Christ. The old stuff is gone. The yeah. new is here. All that old stuff, all that stuff, that BC before Christ stuff that you carried gone, clean, new, even your DNA is sparking and firing new DNA to lighten and brighten and go for it because you are a new creation. You have the mind of Christ. God help me. I, I need that. I need that. I tell him all the time. I need that mind of Christ. I mean, I, please, please, Lord, remind, I have to remind myself. I have the mind of Christ. That's amazing. Yeah. And wild. we have confidence. We can have confidence because uh, such confidence before God is ours through Christ. Not that we're competent in ourselves to claim anything, right? But he's qualified us. He, Jesus, has qualified us as ministers of a new covenant. Yeah. Guys, if you guys are uh, want to type in here, comment saying, where are you feeling like you're not qualified? What, what are the things you're struggling with? Or where you feel you, that what makes you qualified? Like, you know, to all this scripture that Jill's releasing, that God's releasing into our lives. Let's have a conversation. So type in your comments. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 21, uh, equip you with everything good that you may do his will. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Yeah. And we are more than conquerors. Like he just... He just does everything. He gives us everything we need spiritually and in the natural. Yep. So, so I am one of the biggest babies when it comes to doing new things. Uh, no, I used to be one of the biggest babies. <laughs> I was like, what? what is this is news to me. You're doing new things. I'd be like, no, I can't do it. I can't do that. And God has really met me in these, in these I can'ts to show me how I can. He's met me in the midst of the process. Yeah. And he's shown me through his word, through uh, painting, through all the things that he has, the whole journey that he has taken me on to, um, he shows me. And each time I come up a little higher, yeah. each time I discover something else about myself that I did not know did i know that i could paint no no did i know that i could teach no did i know that i could preach no did i know that i could do pretty much anything i am doing now no i really and truly did not know myself i didn't 
And the only way to know myself was to know him and then to move forward in the things that he said I could do. And I did him afraid. It's my biggest thing, right? Just do it, do it afraid, but do it. That's become my motto because that's how I did everything. I did it afraid, yeah. but I did it. And then, and then I kept doing it and realized I wasn't afraid anymore. And not only was I not afraid, I was actually qualified to do it. I was equipped to do it. Not always qualified according to the world standards. Right. So um, like when I was writing my last book, you know, and I, I, I've come a long way, right? I take those thoughts captive. I bring them into obedience, you know, to Christ. Come on, Jill. Let's I've go. come a long way. I can Let's do go. that. You know, no, I'm not listening to that old man garbage. Um, but still, you know, it's a little dig here and there, a little dig. Do you think you can really write a book? Who do you think you are, Teresa Dedman? Now, <laughs> I love Teresa Dedman, right? You know, all these people that I that I learned from, Teresa Dedman and Stephen Roach and yeah. Christ John Otto and, and, and Matt Tommy, like these are people that I looked to and I still look to for what God has given them. And, 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 and the enemy says, who do you think you are? Do you think you're like them? Because you're not. I don't have the education. I don't. I mean, I went to the school of hard knocks. I am not qualified according to the world to do what I'm doing. But Holy Spirit is an amazing teacher. And God put things in me that'll, that allow me to take on the world, to do the things that I didn't think that I could do. Oh, yeah. I've and I'm seen doing it. it. I've seen it. It's crazy. I mean, look at the, look at the, different. Look at the disciples, guys. How crazy are the disciples? I mean, these are fishermen. These are tax collectors. These are just people off the street like us. God picked people like us. He didn't go to the elite. Right. He didn't go to the superstars. He didn't go, you know, he went to John the Baptist living in, you know, out in the wilderness, eating locusts with honey. I mean, and he went to fishermen and said, you're going to be fishers of men. They wrote the Bible. They did stuff that they were never qualified to do, guys. But yet they were. And they were. They weren't and they were. Because they realized the yeah. power of God. They realized how much he loved them and how much he loves us in the world. And it was everything they did was for his glory. They went, they died for him, guys. You know, and we seriously have to get to the point where are we willing, truly willing to die for this God? Yes. This God that's claimed his stake on you and me. And uh, these are serious times. Yeah. These are serious questions. We don't want to uh, water down backstage pass. So, so we're very lively. We're very entertaining. We're a lot of fun. We don't do anything without fun. But I also want you to understand the seriousness of these backstage passes. The depth that God wants to go with you yeah. and me and the world, guys, is deep. So we're encouraging you guys. Let's go with us. We don't know everything. We don't know what we're doing, but we know that God's God's the one that qualified us to move. We just said yes, and we're just watching him do his thing in and through us. He's just looking for people to say yes. And that's the thing. You know, you said uh, be willing to die. Willing. Um, right now, you're not being asked necessarily to die to go on the front lines and die for jesus but to a lot of people saying yes is like a death Mm -hmm. because of fear because fear says be safe be safe don't risk don't step out people might might think uh, less of you you might mess up uh things might turn out right you might look like a fool you might look like a failure that's death yeah. That is like death to people saying yes right now um, in, in some ways is like marching into death because you don't know what you don't know yeah, exactly. until God meets you. And so um, thankfully, we don't have to stand in front of bullets. Most of the people watching, if not all of the people that are, are watching, are not going to have to stand in front of bullets. But we all will have to say yes. And we all will have to risk looking 
like 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 we're not we're not all that in a bag of chips well saying yes to the unknown guys is right. scary as heck we don't know what the future holds for us other than we know that we've got the end the end game played god's got the end game played out for us so we know the long end game is eternity for us but we live eternity now right and it's it's no holds barred we got it we got to go forward and there's there's things a lot of us want everything mapped out so we're god map out my life tell me he's not gonna do it guys let's just put that to bed he is not gonna map out your life and tell you exactly the steps you need to take but he is gonna nudge you he is gonna direct you he is gonna show you things he is gonna bring you signs he's gonna bring you messengers he's gonna bring people around you he's gonna He's going to position you. And w- that's the dance. Watch my hand. That's the dance. We, mm-hmm. we dance with Papa God and we get in this rhythm, this cadence with him, and we move. When he moves, we move. And we're always looking for, God, what is your next move? What is the next move is a good prayer. Not like, what are all my moves? And if you, and if you don't know what those end, the, all those moves are, it just stops you. That's not, we need to just go the next move, the next move. I mean, Julie Ballard, you're on here. I mean, how crazy it is. She started her own publishing company, um, Victory Vision Publishing. And, you know, that's scary when you're starting something, though you yeah. have knowledge, you just don't have all of the knowledge and the breadth and the depth of what you're doing. Right. Jill with painting, she didn't she didn't know all the ins and outs, but she was willing to say, yes, I'm going to explore with Papa God. And she learned, learned and learned and adapted and was positioned with Papa God. She danced it out with him. And now she's here with Papa God, helping others create their own dance with Papa. It's your own dance, guys. It is your own dance. It's your own dance. And and that's, that's a good point. Do not despise humble beginnings. No. Do not despise humble beginnings. So in the beginning, my big concern was just, can I paint in public? I was asked to paint in public and I don't do things at that time. I didn't do anything in public. I didn't speak in public. I didn't do anything in public. I didn't paint. I didn't do anything. I was very content to be behind the scenes. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And um, so that was my, my big thing. And then here's the other thing. We were, we were blessed to be running with people, our pastors, Mm -hmm. who saw in us what God sees and gave us opportunity to step into it Mm -hmm. and drew us sometimes kicking and screaming for me, drew me into uh, greater measures of who I was because they saw me as God saw, saw me. Um, and so that's another really good thing. Don't despise humble beginnings. We all got to start somewhere and surround yourself with people who will see you as God sees you and draw you into it. Encourage you, encourage you, draw the gold and encourage you to run after the things that God has already placed on your resume. Yeah. That it is there. And then here's the thing. So you got qualifications. So you've been to school or, or, or what have you, and you've got gifts and you've got talents and you've got abilities and you've got all the things that people look yeah. for in the natural. If you don't have God with you, it's not going to get you where you want to go because really, it's all of us and all of him. And he meets us right where we're at. And he takes our qualifications and ramps them up to beyond anything we can even know. I'm going to find a scripture here for you. Um, Philippians 2.13. Yeah. For it is God who works in you, yeah. both to will and to work, For his good pleasure. It is God that does the work. It's the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher, right? And I I look at the life of For whose pleasure? God's pleasure. For God's pleasure, guys. 
it's but it more, ends up being ours but because we love to when we please do for when, god. when there's pleasing of god it pleases us right but we don't strive to please god it's not about what we do to please him it's again we go to the overflow of love love is the root of everything we gotta we, it's from that love the overflow that we want to please god right so right so good angela hughes is on here too and and uh, i just want to talk about how she probably i know talking with angela she didn't feel qualified to write the book this epic fantasy series that she is writing right now yeah. uh, how many of you right now you can type in what are you feeling that you're not qualified to do and we can go to scripture and we can talk to god and you can go backstage with papa god saying how yeah. he's going to talk to you saying you are qualified darn it now let's do it together you're not alone when he qualifies right. us it doesn't say you're on your own he's doing it with you you have the power of god to fulfill this calling right. inside of you he doesn't abandon us he doesn't right. forsake us these are not just christian quotes that we pull out of the bible this is the real deal guys yeah and if you're here and you're not qualified who's telling you that who's saying yeah. you're not qualified yep who is that saying it because it sure isn't the one who made you yeah the one who created you to do everything you need to do everything that he is calling you to do you have everything already in you and you have the power of the Holy Spirit. If you love Jesus, if you've given your life to him, he comes into you and empowers you, enables you to do what it is that you do. Okay. So um, we got a couple of people here. Julie Ballard, she's saying, my fear is anyone. Oh, I lost it. Um, let me open this back up. People are commenting right and left and it just moving out of the area here. Oops. Uh, I probably got to click on here and go to the comments. Bear with us for one moment. So my fear is anyone going to trust me? So Julie's running a whole company and uh, with publishing. She's bringing in other people, publishing their works. What a big job that is right. to champion another person's work and, and, and partnering with them and collaborating with them where you have to get into the head of that author that person coming in and saying, I, I, I love what you're doing and I want to see this as success. So Julie comes alongside of somebody and says, I see this as a success and I want to help you. How many of us need someone to come alongside of and say, I want to help you and champion you. You're not alone. You don't have to do this by yourself. Julie's one of those, one of those people, God's people coming alongside of you. And she's got so many testimonies of God's amazing, miraculous provision and 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 partnering with other people and she's talking about her fear is anyone going to trust me is anyone believe that i can supernaturally understand words uh but look what the lord has done so grateful with or without the qualifications he qualifies the called we just have to step into it so it. and then laura um, one sec before yeah. you move on um uh, julie um you being you in the power of the holy spirit yeah. By the grace of God moving in that light, I don't think anyone can help but trust you. And if they don't, it's not you, it's them. So you are just being all of you yeah. to the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. That is a safe place. Yeah. That is a trustworthy place. Um, and, uh, I just, I just think that, that the fear is what has to go yeah. because fear is at the root of everything that tries to paralyze us from being and all of who we're supposed to be and stepping into that, those places. So the fear in itself is the, is the, is the trigger that we know is like, no bueno. If, if, yeah. if it's attached to a fear, it has to go. Look at this, guys. Look at this. And God's just showing this to me right now. That look at how Julie, and, I'll, and we'll use Julie as an example. Julie, you, you started with one person and, and then it built from there. You, you got um, people to uh, testimonies about you and your goodness and, and your successes. God does the same thing with his people, he builds his testimony through the workings of what he's doing through his people. 
started way back with, with Adam and Eve, building his testimony. And those people kept pour, pointing back to what God has done for them, right. with them, about them. And those, have, and, that, and those testimonies have led other people to come on board and to create a relationship with God. It's no different than what we're doing with building our companies, with building uh, our platforms, with building our resume, guys. Our resume is built on relationship with Christ. Our resume is built on love. Our resume is built on the testimonies of others reporting back, saying, Julie did an amazing job. She loved me so well. And then because of that testimony, another person came on board. Yeah. And another person and another person, Jesus. more and Spirit more and more, the testimony of Jesus, Spirit of Prophecy. So you can see the collaboration, you can see the comparison of what God's doing in his resume building, and it goes, it overflows to us. It's the same, guys. It's yeah. the same. Um, Laura, I know Laura had a comment here. Uh, Laura Kopic, uh, you said, not qualified to speak and coach others to find their identity in Christ. Yes. Who told you you were naked? I mean, isn't that what God, Who told that, you were isn't naked, what God Laura? said? Isn't that what God said in, in the Bible, in, in, in the garden? You know, they're like, oh my gosh. And he's like, who told you you were naked? Who told you you didn't have something? Yep, exactly. Who told you that you lacked exactly. something? Who told you? And that's what God says. So every time that comes to you, Lord, just say, who's talking yeah and he needs to shut up yes and then and then and then you just you and we can't and we can't feed it either you know we can't feed that monster because when we what we meditate on um it becomes our reality right so um when that monster goes who you know you don't have enough you don't have what it takes and and we go yeah you're right i don't have this and i don't have that that's when it blows up and up yeah. and up and up but, but when we, um, the, and I, I don't have the scripture memorized completely, so I'm going to read it. Um, Second Corinthians 10, five, we demolish arguments and every pretension <laughs> that sets itself Gosh. up against the knowledge of Christ. Come and on. we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Ooh, Ooh. that sounds good, doesn't it? Yes. And that takes effort. It takes practice. Yes. It's an exercise that we have to do. Literally, I have been driving in my car and I hear stuff and I literally, I'm in my car going, no. And I'm like screaming, no. And I'm not going to believe, I reject that, you know? Yeah. And, and we literally <laughs> have to shake ourselves sometimes to say, no, I am not going to believe that lie. Yeah. Because it's only when we, when we, when we cast that out, like literally stomp on it, put it under your feet, will you have the freedom to experience what God has for you? Totally. All that he has for you. I am not kidding. To be here sitting in front of you today, it's that you would even bother to listen to me is miraculous. And yet it's not, it's God. It's miraculous because I actually said yes, and I actually did it, and I and I worked through all of the stuff, the the really hard stuff, to the the, the fear that I had, yeah, um, which became uh, uh, was on my physical body. So standing up in front of people would literally put me in the bathroom. I just physically, I just ah, I made me sick. Yeah, um, I had to work through being sick every time I stood up for the first few times. And after that, it got easier, it got easier. Um, but it's, that's the yes. Yep. That's the little death. Like diarrhea is the little death, yes. right? <laughs> but it's what we, it's what we do. And now I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the same going to be for you. Now Laura. she tackles me for the mic. Yeah, I do. So, so Rhonda, okay, wait, Laura. I, you got it, Laura. Oh my gosh, you pull, got it. Pull on the testimonies. Think of, of your students. Think of of people that have come to you and said the craziest things, those compliments. And you're like, wow, I am touching lives. And sometimes, you know, as a teacher and an educator and in and, and the, and the scope of work that you're in, you don't get all of that gratification. You don't get that, that insight, but sometimes you do. God will bring those and he has. You have those testimonies. Mm -hmm. 
So when you get those testimonies, and this is for everybody, write those testimonies down, keep a log. It's not to boast. It's to be a stone of remembrance for yeah. you that points back to who, him, that's invited you backstage. Yeah. He doesn't invite everyone backstage, although he does, but not everyone has access to him until they believe in him that they get the right to be called children of God. Yeah. Rhonda Barber, she says, my greatest concern always uh, pops up as, can I really do this big, important thing? Well, guess what? Without Jesus, you can't. Yeah. Seriously, without Jesus, you cannot. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot. You are equipped to do a lot. You are a talented, creative, amazingly gifted person. I know you, and I know all, I know those things about you. I see those things in you. But what he's giving you is too big for you. Yeah. And that's that's what he does. He gives us things that are too big for just us because he wants to partner with us. So you've got what you need and he's got all the rest. And, um, and we're seeing that with the friends of ours who are putting on a Cirque du Soleil, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, of production. And they will tell you, we don't know what we're doing. And, um, and yet they're saying yes. And Holy Spirit, God is coming alongside them and opening yeah. doors and helping them out in ways that they never would have experienced the magnitude of God without stepping in and partnering with him. So do you have it? Yes, because you have him. And uh, it's what you have and what he has. And right. there's, it's no fail. We have to go back to scripture. Moses, go back and, and, tell, and tell the Pharaoh to set my people free. What? They want to kill me. I'm not going back there. Now pick up that staff, Moses. You know, throw it on the ground, Moses. Do all these crazy things, Moses. Moses, do this. Moses, do that. Moses, 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 believe in me. Trust in me. Moses, Rhonda, you've got yeah. this. Trust Bring in, in me. Rhonda, in go. Laura, go. Julie, go. Trust yeah. in me. Do this. You've got, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. These are the scriptures that we fall back on and go, God, if you can do it through Moses, do it through me too. Yeah. Give me the confidence to go to that next level and do the big things. And those big things might be small things in others' eyes, but they're huge things for us in our eyes. And Rhonda, you've already seen the increase. You have. You've already stepped into areas that you haven't done before. You've already stepped into the writing and the script writing and the so speaking good. and these things. And you're like, well, I got that down now. Yeah. Right. So you, you, we all start with our humble beginnings, right? And then and he gives grows. the increase. Exactly. And the enemy is not gonna stop. He still attacks me, still attacks Jill. Do you think I don't get thoughts of, I'm not qualified to run this whole organization. I'm not qualified to be a pastor. I'm not qualified to be an author. He flunked English people. The enemy's constantly <laughs> trying to get in my head. But I'm constantly in scripture. I'm constantly falling more and more right. in love with God. I'm constantly in, I don't care if I'm not qualified. He is. And that's all that matters. And if he told me to go here, I'm going there. Because he'll make it happen. The it's enemy easy. has nothing for yeah. me. Jesus has everything. He's the author and, and finisher of our faith. So Dang if he's right. given you a directive, if he's given you assignment, he will complete it. He will complete it through you. This as is, long as this is what you write on your resume, guys. Jesus died for me. He loves me. In him, I have fullness. <laughs> In him, there is no lack. These are your resume. Yeah. And this is for you. Yeah. And you to give Patience it back. to 10. I'm it back the to... work. He created me and put everything <laughs> in me before the foundations. Yes. I mean, you know, Jeremiah, he's like, hey, you got it. I I I ordained you. Come on. I I, I ordained you before Let's you were go. even born to do this. It's you have time, guys. look at Paul. Look at Paul. He was a murderer of Christians. He was a jerk. And God flipped the script. And he's knowingly says, I'm the least. Like, I'm the least of everyone. Yeah. Um, I, I have the scripture here. Um, and, and he has actually, what they people say, he's the greatest missionary that ever lived. 
-hmm. He wrote, uh, I think, 14 of the 27 books of the New Testament. He spread the gospel far and wide. And he said, 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10, I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to even be called an apostle. Yeah. Uh, uh, an apostle. Right? <laughs> an apostle. It can't be called that either. <laughs> uh, called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But, and here's the big but. That sounds funny. Here's the big butt. <laughs> Here's the big butt. Okay. Here's the Sometimes big butt. I just gotta laugh at myself. Okay. <laughs> but by, by, by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am but what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, because I worked harder. I said yes. I worked through the fear. I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me. Yeah, come on. Come on. You have nothing, yes. you have everything. Oh, let's Your go. resume, I don't care what, what is required by the world standards, you have everything you need to succeed in the things that God is giving you. Otherwise, he would not be a very good God. Yeah. He would not be a very faithful God. He would not be a very big God to call you to something and then laugh behind your back and say, you're never going to do it. Yeah. Right. That is not our God. Right. Our God is like, take that baby step. Come on. I'm going to lift you higher. Take another baby step. I'm going to lift you even higher. And you and me, you and me, baby, we're going to do this thing. And you're going to be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised because I've seen it in you the whole time. Yeah. And it was put in you. I put that in you when I created you. It's in your re it's in your very DNA that you're going to be surprised. And we're going to have more fun and more fun. And guess what? When you think you've got it, we're going to take you even farther. And every day of your life, you have an opportunity to level up. Every day of your life, you have an opportunity to learn something new about him and new about you. And it's going to be brilliant yeah love people well guys yeah love them love them well that's our marching orders love god with all your heart mind soul spirit and love your neighbor as yourself love well and yeah. watch what god does through that loving one person at a time rulers in front of you just in the way them. that you are designed to love them. and do the best that, that you can like through you do the best that you can to get along with everybody Sometimes we don't get along with everybody, but we're going to love as best as we can the way he shows us with forgiveness and uh, grace and his strength. It's his strength. His strength. So what's in your a resume? Yeah. Everything you need. Everything. Everything you need to succeed. And I'll end with this. Yeah. Ephesians 3, 20, 21. Now to him, to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, all generations. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We love you. We love you guys. And we will see you next week.